Okay guys, what I would like to show you today is I want to talk about some basics on how to paint or create a sky. And so uh, first thing I want to do is I want to show you some samples here, uh, just some high res samples. These are supposed to be high res, I guess I grabbed the wrong ones, um, of some images here that I just grabbed from online to talk about some basic reference of what we are looking at and what we see. Um, Anything that you paint, I always do like a visual analysis of it first off before I start painting. No matter what it is, if it's stone, if it's concrete, if I'm doing textures for a UV maps for a game or if I'm doing a conceptual piece, the first thing that I do is I look into the particular location and I like to look at some of the background to see how it's working. Okay, so I go through all that information and so if I'm going to paint... Uh, an environment piece off of a, an old dock in London, I'm going to go do reference to see what type of weather London's going to have to see how it affects and so on. I do like to cover that because anything I'm going to do I like to look at first. So we're going to talk about painting a sky and there's a couple things that I already know about skies that I wanted to share with you. So um, some of the basic information about a sky, and I think this one covers it pretty good, is that there's a natural transition of color, color that takes place in a sky. There's a gradient, and part of the reason why that's happening is because we live on a giant sphere. Okay, so when you look out across the hot, the excuse me, the horizon line, I can't talk today, you're going to notice this gradation that tends to take place. It's going to drop down from the sky colors that are on the top, and as we gradate and get closer to the horizon line, and the horizon line in perspective would be the distance that's going to be the furthest away from us, okay, we're going to have a change in color. And the reason why we're going to have that change is because there's a natural atmospheric change happening inside the composition of that sphere that's wrapping over us, okay? There are times when that could change. Um, if you've ever been in uh, a climate period, for example, um, this last weekend it was raining and it was, there were a lot of big clouds and the clouds create a lot of overcast and so there might be sun up above the clouds. If you've ever been on an airplane and you're traveling, you'll notice that. You come down underneath, it's all, sh it's all shaded, okay? Um, there could be um, a, any other type of weather condition. There could be something in the back that could be happening. So there are different times when, it, when that can change. Are skies always blue? Well, no, of course not they're always blue. They change colors all the time depending on the position of the sun and any other type of reflective qualities that might be happening. So another good example of that might be when we're looking at the moonlight. Moonlight does create, it is a dedicated light source because it's bouncing off light from the sun and then we get moonlight that's coming down. Okay, the moon is not a light source that's lit with, with uh, you know, chemistry combustion happening like the sun is. Okay, so when we look at a full moon, that's actually reflecting light back. And if we look down on shadows, depending on the position of the moon inside our environment, and one of the key rules that I was taught back in the, the days of perspective is that if I have the moon or the sun inside my picture plane, I'm going to have what we call a radial light source. If the moon or the sun is outside of my picture plane, and so let's say it's like uh, 10 or 11 o'clock, in the morning and it's up to the far left hand corner I'm gonna have parallel light rays coming down okay and so that's a little hard to sort of explain right here but if you look at it in perspective it makes sense because as the earth is turning and rotating and if you're along the equator okay of the earth everyone knows what the equator is right which we are in California pretty close to it okay in the morning and in the evening you will see the sun rising and dropping therefore the shadows that are being cast are going to be in a radial point of view which means they're going to be radiating from one center point okay when we have a uh, when it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon the sun is way above us so all the light rays are coming straight down all the shadows tend to cast at a parallel angle to each other and you could prove that by looking at photos you're just going outside and looking around and seeing what what shadows are doing. So anyway, I just wanted to cover that really quick. We'll get back to that in a minute. But what's most important is to look at this gradient that's naturally taking place. Whenever I start to paint an environment, one of the first things that I like to do is I block in just a rough gradient because I want to have some idea of what the sky is going to be. Um, the sky does change in colors. Like you said, in the morning, sometimes you might have a lot of yellow. And then in the evening, depening on the weather conditions, you can have these, be California has beautiful 
red and, and some you know pinks and orange and yellow sunsets that just spread across and a lot of that's going to be dictate dictated by the cloud conditions so if we have and there's different types of clouds right two most popular stratus and cumulonimbus but those are spread out all across and if you're looking at the sun reflecting off clouds are basically water formations water can be reflective okay and so it can absorb color and light and it can change the prism and how um, lights being cast okay so let's just bring up the the color swapper and I'd like to bring this up just to talk about show you the transition that's happening here in color now if we look up here uh, we tend to have a more saturated color that's going to be up on the top here and here we have more of a blue what's going to happen is as we drop down to this horizon line here um, I worked with a friend of mine who was a painter in back in the day at Disney feature animation and he always made a comment to me and he goes whenever you get back down to that horizon there all you have to do is put down a little bit of turquoise in the back because turquoise is that local color of that blue that's fading back and that'll give you that natural feel so if I come down here and I swab down here can you see how my color picker jumped immediately I'm way up here in almost a soft, a soft pastel range I'm right here next to white and I'm at a blue okay so if I come down here and I and I just swab with my color picker here you can see the color changes especially down in here okay I'm really light and some of this it might be in that neighborhood of getting down to like a light turquoise okay um, versus if I come over here watch me jump to a much richer blue you see that okay and then if I go up to the top here sometimes that's even richer okay so one of the great things about just looking at the photo and analyzing what we're gonna paint is that we just start with that basic gradient where we're going to paint a little bit darker and we're going to lightly fade it down towards the horizon and as we get closer to that horizon where the atmospheric perspective is going to take place and it's going to be very distant and further away it's going to change in color it's not going to be that same uh, local value as what's happening up here I didn't go over this before with some of you guys but I was going around yesterday looking at some of the textures and the spheres uh, with different surfaces you guys are painting and I was pulling up the color picker here with many of you showing you how to read and look at what the colors are hap what's happening with the colors when I get down here see how light that is and see how it's like changing and there's a huge difference from right there all the way up into here okay and so what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm just gonna block in a sky skies are really fun to block in okay and it's really simple because you can block it in really quick with a rough brush then you can come back on top of it and you can even put a gradient on top so I'm gonna do that as well I'm gonna create a whole separate layer as a gradient drop a color in there and then I can blend some of that color in there the reason why you always want to start off with the sky and why I do in all my work is that the sky is what is sort of reflecting uh, the light and changing the light conditions of my foreground midground and background Okay, so if I remember when in the first assignment that we did in class, we were talking about uh, copying and pasting a robot inside of that sunny field of green wheat, right? And there was a sunny day, so we had a lot of yellow and green reflecting back, which are the natural light conditions. So what's going to happen here is as I start to paint my sky, if I start to develop a foreground, midground, and background, and I want to adjust the colors, it's on a separate layer, so it's really easy to do. All I have to do is go in there and I can man manipulate hue and saturation, right? I can add other layers on top. It's really, really easy to make that move. And then what we'll do is we'll start to paint from the back coming forward, and we'll start to paint something that's really loose back here, okay, that's much softer, and as we get a little bit closer, uh, it'll get a little bit richer, and then as we get even closer, it'll get richer. And this is actually a pretty good photo, because look at the distance here. Look at how rich and green um, and how the colors are looking down right up in front of us, and then we're going to make a transition from the foreground here, and then we're going to go to the midground. So when we get back here in the midground, look at what happened when I color pick some of these colors right here look at where they're landing okay okay this is much softer okay um, let's pick one of these values here it's in the middle so I'm getting pretty much anything I'm swabbing over here is going to be from the middle up versus when I come down here up here in the foreground look at what I'm swabbing I'm coming from the middle down because I'm a lot richer why because in atmospheric perspective colors 
um, photos, anything that's really close to me in my foreground, it's going to be a lot richer and it's going to be a lot darker. So look at what happens. Look at when I swab that color there of the bush or even swab this color here. Everything I'm, I'm swabbing is from this 50% mark down. Now, I haven't covered or talked about values yet with you, but this is something that you should have learned in basic drawing. We have a value set of going from white, which is zero, and 10, which is pure black, okay? And so when we look at our color picker here, what's really cool is just by analyzing the photo, you can see that all the values of everything that's in the foreground right here is pretty much between 50 to about 80, 90%. And then when we come back over here and start swabbing items that are in that are multiple colors in the midground you can see they are from about 50 percent upwards to about 30 percent and then when we come back here to the background and start swabbing colors you're going to see we're going to be stuck in sort of that 30 to 20 percent range where things are getting a lot softer and it's jumping up a little bit closer here okay that right there is one of the most important simple aspects to remember about how to produce something digitally Okay, is thinking about how it works in atmospheric perspective. All of our brains, no matter how good of a painter, traditional oil painter or digital painter you might be, all of our brains are pre-programmed to understand okay, what atmospheric perspective is because it's something that we've been seeing for a majority of our life. Okay, ever since we've been little kids, we can recognize things far away. Okay, have you ever been on a road in the middle of the desert? and you look out like on a road, let's say going to like Las Vegas, and you look out and you can see like a little bird and then you're like, well, wait a minute, I thought I just saw a flying ship or something moved really quickly, right? Well, that's sort of a good example of looking at things that change in atmospheric perspective. Those are, those are um, visions, patterns, light patterns that we've seen the majority of our life that are already sort of pre-programmed in your little computer upstairs, okay? All right, I'm gonna post for you a couple samples up online in case you get really worried about how to prep your sky here. What you can do is you can look at a sample, swab from the colors, but then I want you to paint it traditionally yourself. Some artists will go in and actually copy and paste a whole sky, throw it in there and paint over. We'll talk about that a little bit later. If you had to do a speed painting, meaning that you had to produce something and you had maybe two hours to do a real rough concept, that would be a valid way to work really quickly, but I always like to paint over it because I don't want my photo looking like, uh, or excuse me, my sky looking like a total photo. I don't want it to look like a ripoff. But there's nothing wrong with taking part of a photo, expediting my process, running it through a filter and painting on top of it. I can do that too. Okay, so first off, we'll talk about a couple of those techniques over this demo, and we'll also lead into a demo tomorrow as well. But let's start right now. I'm going to come over here. I just wanted to show you some of those base images. Um, here's another good example. Let's look at the color change here. Look at that blue right there, and look at down here. Okay, a little bit of change there, but um, let's try over here in this far corner. Let's look at how much darker it is, and let's look down here. It jumps over from here to about there. So. You know, that's a little bit of a contrast there. You know what? Hold on. Let me take off that, that picker there. When I'm looking at that, that to me feels a lot lighter and it feels a lot richer. But for some reason, I'm not getting that up on the color picker right there. Let's just double check. There we go. And here feels it. Yeah, it's a little bit more saturated. It's jumping over to the right-hand side here. So anytime we get a color or a color option moving this direction, that's pure saturation meaning that that's the pure color and it's it, it a bright chroma without any white or black in it. Anytime we move over this way, we're going to get more of a soft pastel because we're adding more white than the color. And anytime we start to move downward, we're adding more black. That's why white and black aren't colors. That's why they're tints and shades. Okay. All right. So let's go over here. I'm just going to grab one of the brushes. Now in the brush pack that I gave you guys, okay, I'm going to create a new layer for this. I'm going to call this sky. Okay, and I'm going to um, grab one of the brushes here. So I'm going to right click on my, on my canvas here. And if you scroll down here, I told you this is a brush that I created by accident. First thing I'm going to do is I like to block in and I use a brush here. I have this one because it's like a, a, a texture fade in or I can come down here. I like some of these for blocking in rough color. And then I'm going to come back in here. I don't know if you guys remember, I created that one brush that was called a a tree canopy brush. Let me see if I can find it. What did I do with it? You know what? I've been saving my brushes back and forth. 
there it is, cloud tree canopy right there. This works really great for painting clouds. I love it, and I created it by accident. I used it to do canopies for floors, and it does clouds just excellently. So I'll use that today too, but I want to show you those three brushes. There's the cloud tree canopy, which I gave you, and if you scroll up here, so that's about 15 down below. I'm going to start with one of these, uh, these soft sort of texture fade-ins right here. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to look at anything. I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to start with a color. So I already know that I might be a little bit more saturated from looking at that photo up on the top. And then as it fades downward, I'm going to drop down and get a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is just come over here and make sure I'm at 100% here. Okay. And well, hold on a minute. What's going on here? Oh, that's why I'm on eraser, even though I'd hit brush. Let's go back and my bad. Too busy talking and trying to record at the same time here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of lightly go across and I'm going to block in now I need to have a point that's sort of what I call like my horizon line where I understand where part of my image is going to come down to a base horizon okay so I'm going to put it lower about right here okay now my computer's lagging a little bit the reason why it's lagging is that I have this at a really large DPI Okay, um, and that's okay, and I zoomed in there by accident too. So here, let me come down here. Now look, you'll notice the first time I passed the brush sensitivity, I was only at 20%. Okay, so it, it's up to you. If you want to paint in a pure color and block it in or start to do your own gradient, totally fine. Now I'm going to come back here. As I start to paint on this the second time, see it's going to get a little bit darker. Okay, and I can lightly sort of come in here. I'm going to come back in here. I like to sort of blend in. A little bit at a time where I get a little on the top there I might throw down a little bit here I just like to create I don't try to create the most perfect gradient in the world skies have natural transition there's light moving through them there's moisture in them right and I find that to be a benefit for me so I just sort of try to act a little rough with it and then once I get something blocked in that starts to feel like it's working pretty good what I can do let me come down here I want to add a little bit more turquoise down in there so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to drop this, move it down a little bit here towards, towards green. Okay, there we go. I'm going to block a little bit more of a turquoise in here at the base where the horizon line might be. Okay, and I'm also going to make it a little bit lighter. I'm going to come over here. There we go. Okay. Now, there's a couple ways that I could come in here and start to blend my sky. I have a real simple, just couple stroke path. I have a dark color. Let's color swab it and check it out. Look, I'm a little bit darker there. I get a little bit lighter, 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 and then I start to transition into a little bit of a turquoise here. I'm much more in that upper scale, which is fine right now. This is my, my backdrop of my sky. So one of the things that I like to do is that you can come in here. There's a couple options. You could run this through a filter right now if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, let me, let's just look at a couple of different options on what you could do. Okay, so here, let me duplicate that. We'll put that through a filter. Um, just by duplicating, I get a much richer sky that's in there. Okay, the next thing you can do is you could come over um, and you could swab if you have an area of color that you like. Okay, you could come in here and swab that color and then just sort of lightly paint it in here. Now, my brush is still at 20%, so when I'm swabbing a color right in here, let me zoom in a little bit more. So if I come in here, I'm just swabbing that blue and then I'm sort of painting it in. But let's say I like some of that dark that's there. I can come over here adjust the size of my brush and get that to sort of fade in this way say I went a little bit darker over here okay I'm gonna go up to about 40 percent make that a little bit darker so what I'm actually doing it's sort of like a natural blending technique is I'm just painting in some colors and blending them very softly at a lower grade on top of each other okay and go a little bit smaller I want to go a little bit darker up here so I might come over here drop down a little bit more so my brush is set at 40 percent let me do a pass at about 20. there we go put a darker gradient going across there and now it's sort of fading over okay and then the same thing i'm going to come in here swab this just sort of i'm just going to spend a little bit of my time trying to blend some of this in now the one thing you want to watch when you start off sometimes i use the same size brush okay but then i start adjusting using the bracket setting going a little bit smaller because that way I don't have all the same brush strokes happening all over. This blue might be coming down here and it might lightly sort of blend in 
over this way and then come over here and lightly fade. There's like a nice little wisping quality to clouds. And what's really cool about using Photoshop and having the brush presets uh, available is that you can manipulate your brush to work uh, the way that you want it to. So I'm just going to come in here and just keep plocking this in, try to get a light fade in here. Now, another approach outside of just coming in here and lightly painting in sort of what I have, okay, is to come over here with my, my smooth option. So if I come over here, and I select my smudge tool or my blur tool. Let's go to smudge right now. Remember, I can select any one of my brushes that I have in here, and that's going to be affected when I go to smudge in there. Okay. Um, give me a second here. Here's a couple. The smudge nice works pretty good. This is a standard preset brush that I was given from a student, and I find it works pretty good. It does slow down a little bit for me because I'm at a, I'm at 11 by 20 something at 300, I think 50 DPI. Um, so hold on a minute here. It's really eating up a lot of memory there. I think I'm too large for this demo with the recorder going on at the same time. And I just smudged at 50% strength. That's way too strong. And that's something I wanted to show you. You have to always double check your strength setting. I want to alter that right now and bring it down really quick. So hold on a second here. Hopefully we don't have a crash. The window recorder um, for Camtasia eats up a lot of memory. I'm going to wait a second here. Let's see what, what, it, what it's going to do. Let me pause for a second see if we can resolve it. Okay, there it stopped. So what I did is I commanded Z. I'm going to go back to about 10 or 20% in that smudge tool here. Okay. Check it. There it goes. So I'm at 20% now. Let's just try going to 10. It's going to smudge a lot easier for me and shouldn't be as strong there going across. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, let me pause again. I'm going to let me adjust the size of my file real quick. And let's hit 10. Okay, so what I was doing is I was starting to come in here with my smudge nice brush. Okay, um, again, you could take any of the brushes that I've given you and you can get them to come in here and you can adjust the strength as you're working here. Um, I'm going to command Z for a second here. Edit actually let me redo. And I'm just going to come in here and just lightly smudge. I'm at 10%. See that? And as I'm smudging across, it's just lightly blending part of the bottom of my sky in here. And if there's something I don't like and I smudge too much, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that because I could come back in here again and I could paint over it. So I'm just going to lightly smudge. I'm just trying to create that, that natural little gradient that I saw in that sky. And I have these little areas of dark and light here. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to start to smudge this across. And that's actually working pretty good there. You see how I made that little wisp of blue going across the center there? Now if I come in and just lightly sort of pass over that, it just sort of nicely blends that all together. And then what I'll do is I don't like to use too much of the smudge tool because then it'll make it look too over smudged. So what I like to do is come back over here and switch back to another brush. So I'll go to a brush and I'll come in here and I might sample like this darker value of the cloud there. And then I might make it a little bit darker, let's say like so, okay. And then I could come in here and be like, hey, what if I have a little bit of a dark spot underneath right here? And I'm gonna do this at like 10%. There, I'm gonna fade that in there a little bit and a fade a little in there. So I'm just sort of building my sky from this point. Okay, getting this nice little transition taking place. And if I over smudge something, no worries. You can just go back at your sky. You can paint over it. Okay. All right, so with that said and done, I, I wanna work on that a little bit more, but I also don't wanna make it a super long demo. I want you guys to do a couple of these of, as practice yourself and get used to getting in there. So that's the first thing I did, okay? Once I get that gradient that starts to work for me and I like it, another quick step that you can do that's really expedited is if I want to put a little bit more gradient in there, but I'm just not getting the color that I like, use the layer options for you and let those do all the work. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So I'm going to create a layer. Okay. Um, I have a layer up above here. What I'm going to do is let's come over here. I want to go a little bit, a little bit darker. See the I'm at about a 60 or 70% grade right there 
of a like a dark cerulean blue okay and then I have I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go a little bit lighter right in here and what I'm gonna do is go to G under the bucket there select your gradient tool and watch what happens here okay it stroked in the wrong direction there it went from dark to light now you see that so it fills the whole entire layer but what's really cool is if I change the layer option or opacity setting see how it can really put a nice little effect it sort of created a nice little dark gradient taking my sky from dark and bringing it right down very quickly okay and also if you leave this at full opacity and you come in here and look at like I use soft light or hard light quite a bit okay so soft light might have some cool effects see it's just light it's softly putting it up on top of the original color so it actually added a little bit more more chroma to the overall sky that I had and I got it a little richer do you see that so let me turn it off and on see that difference and that's sort of cool because I just did that really quickly with the gradient tool okay and so get in there and mess with that let's look at what happens with hard light hard lights way too dark multiply is always very dark unless I come in here and I really lighten it up quite a bit I, I can get a little bit of a, of a nice sort of gloomy day with that okay so anyway, so that's just another approach that you can do. You can get in there. And the great thing about having these here is that they're just separate layers. Okay, so if I want to modify this or I want to do a, a, a change on it, watch what happens here. Look, I can duplicate this layer. Let's say I wanted to have, I did another speed painting, and this time I'm going to have another um, a sky that's going to be a little bit more orange, right? But what if I come in here, select Control u Go to Hue and Balance and watch what happens if I slide and move this over a little bit. I can start to affect the way that part of that blue might work. Okay, now I've created much more um, of an orange. Hold on a minute. Let's go back and do that again. There we go. So I have more of an orange in there. Let me put this on normal now. Okay, and look. Can you see that orange effect? How it just affected part of my clouds there? I just put sort of a cool tint on top of that just by selecting that same layer duplicating it and then I just modified a little bit and I created a much more of a gloomy day okay so it's really cool if you keep whenever I work and do my background sky I tend to keep the background one color and then I tend to keep the clouds another color okay let me jump in here really quick because here's probably the fun part is getting to paint the clouds because clouds are always a lot of fun to paint and there's a reason why they're a lot of fun to paint is that there are natural little highlights they usually have a little shadow under the cloud and they really since it's moisture in the air the little white part that we're seeing is reflecting part of light off and it's just really fun to get these little dark and light little milks and crannies and create a cloud that's coming up okay um, what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna create a layer real quick I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna take that brush that I was telling you about so let me select oops what the heck did I just do go to B I'm going to come over here and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to select that cloud and tree canopy brush that I have here that Phil created by accident. Okay, I'm going to go here. I don't like to go to pure white. Anyone know why I don't want to go to pure white? Because pure white is like the pure highlight. So I tend, I tend to start my clouds with a lighter color of blue first and then I come in there and start to mess and create a cloud. So what I'm going to do, let me zoom in here. I'm just going to paint sort of one cloud here, and I'm going to pretend my light source is coming left to right. So I have highlights on a round surface. They're going to be hitting more left, and then I can have a darker area underneath. So what I'm going to do now is come in here. Let's, let me show you what happens here. I have this light blue. Um, I'm at 10% opacity. Let's go to 100% opacity and see what I just get. Wow, look at that. That was pretty easy, right? That's 100% opacity. That's because my cloud brush rocks. Okay, but look at look at how easy that was. Look, I created a couple clouds. I'm at 100%. If I drop down to like 30% now, now I can get some really finesse. I can really come in here and really start to paint off a little bit of a lighter selection. You see that? Where I can get that cloud to sort of pepper in there, but then it really sort of fades together. Okay. So let's talk about atmospheric perspective real quick. Items that are closer to me are going to be brighter, right? Items that recede away are going to be lighter. So if you think about that, even as I'm painting my sky, a cloud closer to me is going to be white and richer, and a cloud that is back in the horizon is going to what? It's going to fade off and dwindle into the horizon. So I can start to do that as I start to work here. Look, I painted one cloud right there. Let me come over here. I'm going to start to paint a larger cloud that's right in front of me right here. 
Now, um, I'm at a lower opacity rate, so it's really coming out much. Um, here, let's go to 100%. You know what? Maybe I swap colors or something there. That's weird. That's okay. And so what's happening is it's not getting quite that brightness because I need to go up a little bit here. If I go a little bit more over here, aha, now I come in here and then I start to paint a little bit of that transition and get some more of that white coming in here. Okay. And what I can do, it's on a separate layer, right? Check it out. I can select that cloud if I want. I can go to levels. Ugh. That doesn't look good, but look, I can lighten it. I can put a little bit more white into it. You see that? Just by lightening it up real quick in levels, that really pulled that cloud a lot closer to me. And then if I come over here and have some more clouds in the back, they're gonna fade off. Now, real quick, I'm gonna paint this out of just my memory. I'm not gonna look at anything, okay? I know the clouds tend to have a darker value underneath them. It separates them a little bit. So what I can do is I start working. If I come back with my brush here, if I look at that color, I was at a much lighter. Well, what happens if I jump down here to a little bit of darkness here? So if I come down here and I start, I'm going to go down to about 10%, and I'm going to really softly just sort of touch my screen. You see this? I'm painting some of those darker values that I naturally see under some of my clouds there. And that's really what I'm doing is I'm creating a level of contrast of dark against light that's going to get part of my clouds to pop. Now, maybe I don't want that in there right now. Okay, let me come in and go back a couple of steps. And maybe I don't want that darkness. Why? Because once I start putting that dark value under that cloud, you know what it's going to do? It's going to bring that cloud forward to me. Why? Because it has a darker value in it, and the darker values in atmospheric perspective are closer to me. So cloud, by, by me coming in here and starting to paint this, it's really going to pop that cloud and bring it a lot closer to the viewer. Okay? Sometimes you just got to put it on 50 and be like, bam and just hit it a couple times and then you can come back and go to like 10 and then fade it off a little bit if you want so I'm putting a little bit darker value under that cloud that immediately bought, brought that cloud forward so now if I want to have a cloud in the back here I'm gonna come back here swab that color and you see if I come in here really lightly I'm gonna to have to paint sort of a new cloud that's that's in the back here in perspective because we're not going to be able to see as much of the value. So this is going to fade to the back here. This cloud here is going to come a lot more forward to me. And once I get in here and paint some more darks, and if this has much more contrast in this cloud, that's really going to come a lot closer. Okay. One of the cool things about painting clouds and having them on a separate layer is this. Look, you ready? Doo -doo -doo. You can move your clouds around. They're on a separate layer, which means if you're in a real time crunch for painting, you could come in here and select part of a cloud, copy, paste it, check it out. I can bring it over here, transform it, I can right click it, I can flip it horizontal, I can increase the side of it, I can, might be able to put it right in here like this, okay? Let's say I created this other cloud in here and I'm like, you know what, I didn't want to get those dark values in there, I don't like that, that's fine, let's come back here and we'll just paint right over it, and we'll just dull it down. Again, we call this the pushing and the pulling of shapes. I, I worked with a friend of mine um, at a studio. Whenever he painted his clouds, he started with dark value first, and then he went lighter, and he painted up on top of them. Okay. So if I keep working like this, now look, look at my, look at the effects of what my brush is doing here. It's creating that spattered paint feel, which can be very cool if you're looking for that type of feel. But if you're not, and you want to have a very realistic, what I need to do is I might need to come over here now with, with a brush, okay? Um, uh, there it is, I didn't see it. And then I can grab that value and I could fade it in a little bit. See this, watch, let me watch me fade it in there. See that? Just fading it in ever so lightly. Just hitting different spots. I can do that or I can also come down here. I have a hotkey in there for my smudge and I can come down here and I can lightly just tap on top of it and what it does is it's just smudging that little area very quickly for me. You see how that doesn't quite feel like the brush anymore? I've really been able to come along. I like to call that the blending of edges. We talked about that earlier before when we were doing textures. Anytime that you have an edge of something, if it's too hard, just blend it in. Look at how I'm doing that. If I come in here right now and just sit here and do this very light sort of stipple effect with my brush, it's 
picking up the sensitivity. I'm at only 5% strength. Man, look at what happens if I go to 100% strength. Oh, wait a minute there. It was on. Let me merge these into one layer and then you can see it. There we go. Look at that. Oh, that cloud just totally dissipated. If I was going for that really thick impressionistic master feel, I could do that. I could come into my painting now and just smudge my clouds around like that. You see that? There's nothing wrong with doing that. I just disintegrated that cloud and dropped it way into the background. And how did I do that? By loosening up the detail. So now it's completely faded back there. There's nothing wrong with doing that. If you want to paint that way and that's your style, part of Photoshop is finding your own methodology and, and workflow approach to how you like to paint. And a lot of that is based off of you looking at artists that, that you like that, that impact you. For me, I really love the American illustrators. I love Line Decker, Cornwell, um, Maxfield Parrish, and I also like um, a lot of the Impressionists. And that's the way that I like to paint when I can, if I have that freedom. So I like to come in here and get a little bit blocky. If you want to come in here and block something up and fade it to the background, it's really simple. Define that cloud and then knock it back down by blurring it. It's that easy. If I want this cloud to come forward right now, what do I need to do? I'm going to come back in. I'm going to grab that cloud brush that I had, and I'm going to come in here and paint. Now let me show you another brush that's a standard default brush in Photoshop that's that's really cool for painting clouds as well let me see if i still have it it's under natural brushes and it's i thought i had it here let me double check it's just the watercolor brush and it's really fun to get in and mess with you know what i can't seem to find it hold on i could open up another brush here really quick and find it let me see if i can do that actually what i'm going to do is i already saved my brushes i'm going to go over here under brushes i'm going to scroll down to the bottom and i'm going to go to natural brushes too and when I do this, I'm going to hit append, which means add to my current brushes. So as I scroll down here, look right there. See this watercolor one, two, and three? These four right here? These work really well. I really don't have an interest for any of the other brushes. The wet brushes are okay. But let me show you how cool these brushes are. Let me select this watercolor brush here. I've had a lot of great success with this brush in creating clouds. Okay, so see how I blocked in that rough cloud there? Now I could come in here, and every time I touch, it's going to sort of, I think this one is the one that rotates a little bit here. Let me go to 100%. Let me go on another layer so you can see the difference here. And there we go. Let's see what happens. Strength 100. Okay, you know what? See, dumb Phil. I was too busy talking, paying attention to the recorder, and what I did is I changed on my smudge section, not in my brush. So now I'm going to come back to my brush, scroll down here, and select it properly. Now I can paint up here. So we'll look at what happens. Watch me pull this cloud formation out right here. So as I come down here, it just, it just it like hits these little milks and crannies. And I can make it a little bit larger like this. And by getting some of these little highlights in here, see that? It really starts to pull out some of that cloud and make it look realistic. Okay. And as I'm touching this, see what, see what that just did there? See how it got that to pop out? And really brought a, a lot more detail. Now look at this right here. See that just that rough shape right here? It's faded back there. I'm going to get that to pop out. Pretend my light source is left or right. I'm going to come in here and just hit this with a little bit of a highlight in here. Blend that highlight here a little bit. Tap a little bit top here. Once you start looking at some clouds and you start paying attention to how they work, it's actually pretty easy because they just naturally have these beautiful little highlights on them. And then they just sort of just fade off into the sky. You know, look at that. That's like a nice little cloud there. Look at how fast I did that. Look at the highlights. See the difference? And look at the difference before. That cloud was much more subdued and faded back on top of my gradient. And now to bring that cloud forward, what do I do? Bam. Throw some highlights on it. That cloud looks a lot closer. So if I minimize out of here, that cloud is a lot closer. That cloud is much more rough and sort of faded in the back there. That's fine. That's what I want. In fact, I like that so much. Now I can come in here. I can commit to that. Then I might come in here and start working on another cloud. I really support and like the natural process of sort of just experimentation, of just throwing something down on a canvas and then seeing what it turns into. What I mean by that is sometimes when I paint a sky, I just throw a gradient real quick and I do this. I come over, I select my brush, 
and I'm going to go to that cloud brush that I gave you guys here. Where is it? It's down here a little bit. Actually, let's try this one. This would be a good experiment. The Argifinamaya pencil brush. Okay. I just, I don't know. That Imagine some child in the world has that for a name, and he probably hates his parents. Okay. So watch. I'm going to select this brush right here. Okay. And hold on a minute. I have, I think I selected caps lock. I did. So, by the way, you'll notice this. If you hit caps lock by accident, you're going to get that, the crosshairs. I don't like the crosshairs. I barely use them. You hit caps lock again, it gives you back the brush. Okay, so sometimes to be exper to experiment a little bit, I just come over, I select my brush, and I go like this, and I go bam. And then I come over here, and I just make it a little smaller, and I just go bam, bam, bam. And then I come in, and I force myself to just paint those as clouds in there. So now I'll come in at like 10% and then just start coming in here and just figure out, wow, I got a, I did a mistake there. I got to get that to blend in there somehow. Let me get that to fade in here a little bit. And then I start to see what's happening. Look, I, I'm on a layer above, so maybe I'm going to smudge a little bit of that. I'm going to come down here, see what happens if I blur a little, get it from the middle. And what I like this approach because I end up coming up with something I randomly might not have thought of that might have a cool little effect for me. And look at that. I have this really soft sort of cloud now. It's in here. And look, this is the cool thing. If I hit V, I can move that cloud around and put it somewhere else if I don't like it. Here, let's come over here. Let's do this one now. Let's start with a brush. I threw down that pattern real quick. Let me go back to my tree canopy brush and we'll paint a little bit more on top of that. Um, Sorry, I'm too busy talking. There, I got tree canopy here. Let's come over here. Let's see, I just want to blend in. Let's go to about 40% grade. I'm going to blend in some of these edges in here. Just see where that base goes down. How do I fade that in? Okay. Let's see, I'm getting that. Now, let's say I really like that, but it's too thick. I don't like the cloud. Remember, it's on another level. See? Look at that. Now, I can do this. Uh, sorry, I don't like you. And, oops. And I want to transform you. Let's make you thinner. Boom. You select. Done. There's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, I use, we talked about transformation tools before. Transformation tool and the layers are my two favorite options inside Photoshop I use on a regular basis because I could, I, what I'd like you guys to do, a couple exercises, like you to just paint your own sky with clouds in there. Okay. And then I'd like you to get in and do another one where you just take the same cloud and just duplicate it and don't paint another cloud. Because I want you to see the power of the layer effect. So watch me do that real quick here. Let me take that cloud off here. Now I'm just down in my base sky. Watch. I'm going to take this cloud, duplicate that guy, right? Bring it over here. Watch. I'm going to transform it, rotate it upwards like this. Um, I have a, another cloud attached to it there. I'm going to delete that right in there. Deleted, deselect, transform. Okay, and I'm going to transform it. Watch this. I'm going to squash them out. And here, let me just let me just select around him. Oops. There we go. Look, I'm just going to select, transform. Look, I'm just going to squash them out in that direction. Why not? Look, I just created a whole other cloud off of the original cloud I painted. And it's there. So I could just use my layers to create a cloud very easily without I didn't even have to paint anymore. I could just throw one cloud in there and do it super quick. Okay. All right. Um, so here, let me now watch this. Let me show you how I can put highlights real quick. So see how I just put that on there? I can duplicate that exact layer. Okay. I'm going to go to levels, lighten it up a little bit. Go to transform. I'm going to adjust the height of it. I'm going to just select it individually because I have a lot on that little. There we go. So now I can move it independently. Transform it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So they look like little highlights, ending little areas like that. Deselect. And now it's cool if I come back with my eraser in the process of elimination. And if I come back here and erase, I have a darker cloud underneath it, so it's going to get those white highlights to pop out. So if I go to erase, let's go to about 50% and see what happens when I come in there and start to do that. 
Now I'm not changing my brush size. I was using my mouse right there, which is okay. Now I'm using my Cintiq brush. Look at that. I'm just penciling in some cool little detail in there. It's getting the cloud to come up. And say I want to blend that a little bit. I like that blue that's happening in there, right? So I'm just using layer effects now. I have a white with a dark with the same layer on top. I just adjusted the lightness. So as I erase the process of elimination, I'm getting the darker value coming forward. Once I get that the way that I like it, I can just come in here and I can smudge that. How can I smudge it? I showed you the S tool. I can blur or smudge, or I can just come in with another brush. Let's come in with another brush here. And um, let's just try this. I have this uh, texture fade in here, and I'm just going to come over here, brush, and select this. And then I'm just going to sort of lightly go across here and just fade it in, get that to blend in a little bit where I want it to. Always having one finger on the keyboard, getting things to blend in. That's cool. See that? Boom. I just painted a cloud real quickly. I didn't even have to paint it. I just copied and pasted and moved it over. Okay. There are different types of clouds. There are three major types of cloud formations. I know two offhand that I paint on a regular basis. A Kelia Nimbus, which is a big white fluffy cloud, and the other one is a Stratus cloud. Okay, it's long and thin. So it depends on the weather conditions when it gets a rainy storm. This is what drives me nuts. Is like I see a piece of concept art from somebody and it's like a rainy or cloudy day and there's stratus clouds in it. I'm like, no! You always have white puffy clouds when it rains because they fill up with water and drop moisture down. It's that simple. Okay. Anyway, I'm, I'll stop the demo right here. Um, actually, there's one other thing. So I did this real quick. Look, I have this little segment here where I had erased. Let's say I wanted to blend, blend that in. If I go to eraser right here, I'm at 50%. Uh, I'm just erasing, stamping over somebody that, some of that, and I'm blending it in. Look. I have that cloud I just created very quickly and it doesn't even look like that. It looks totally different. And I did that with layer effects very fast. Okay. So let's take a look at everything I have, which is pretty cool. There it is. I have this white stretchy guy here, a guy over there, another one there. And then I even had this other one that I was just manually painting some clouds in there. Okay. So what's cool, what I mentioned before is, here, let's do this real quick. Let's say you want to take one layer right now with clouds and let's run it through a filter. So remember that little technique I showed you where if you hit command all, shift, control, copy, command V and paste. I've now pasted everything that was open onto one layer up above. So watch, we're going to come over to filter right now and let's run that through a filter gallery. So I'm going to come over here. Let's go to filter galleries. Okay. Um, a couple that I really like. You could do some really great stuff with that, the poster edges here. Depends on the values being set. Um, paint jobs is a lot of fun. Look at that. See how it just blended that together for me very easy? So now I'm using, I painted the clouds and the gradient. And Photoshop's just blending it together for me super quick. Look at palette knife. It's going to smear it around a little bit. I can even come in here and adjust the stroke size of the palette knife. See that? How much more blurred it? That's pretty cool. Very efficient very easy way to work okay um, I don't want to do plastic wrap but that'll make it look like shaving cream under plastic wrap or something um, sometimes crosshatch effects what's really cool is you can develop some really cool styles using some of these filter galleries that could you know that's horrible but um, they could expedite part of your work crackler grain look at that it gets a nice grainy feel to it that's pretty cool I could then paint stuff in the midground, foreground, or whatever I want, and have a nice grainy feel to my painting if I was going for that particular style. I really like some of these. I wish there were more filter galleries. I'm sure there are some out there that you can load up in Photoshop, but um, there's a way to do everything in Photoshop, but sometimes it gets it gets so expansive with the knowledge that's in there. That's why I like, you know, I've used poster edges for stuff before. Sponge can create a cool effect, but I have to limit I have to modify part of the, the definition size or the smoothness and see it can get some cool blurriness in there. That's pretty neat. I can get that to look like it's an old painting or style. So use that to your option too. Don't be afraid to paint a cloud, run it through a filter gallery and learn how to do that. That's how you get better at using Photoshop is coming up with quick, simple solutions that expedite part of your workflow. But before you do anything, make sure you go back and um, and take a look 
at the reference to see what is guiding you across and how you're getting there. So look at that difference. That is where I was before. And let me turn that off. That's what I had. So it's just a little difference there um, that that did. But I really look at that effect, sort of how it smeared the white in there. I think that's cool. Just a great simple way. Now I could come in here and I could start painting something in the background. I can paint something in the foreground here. And then I'm on my way to creating my first sort of digital paint piece. Okay, so let me stop the recorder right here. That's something I want you guys to work on in the rest of class today. And then we'll come back and we'll add to this lecture. Tomorrow we'll start painting something in the foreground. We'll paint something in the midground. And then we can come back later and start talking about light and, the, and light source and shadows. And then adding a little bit of light, surrounding light into the piece. We'll put some scale in it, maybe a little strip. And there you have your first conceptual little roughed out speed paint. Okay? All right.